He was a trusted high school coach. She was his star runner. But there were rumors that they were more than student and teacher and allegations of sex crimes. Nearly 20 years later, there is a secret audio recording that her family believes proves it. Five on Your Side's Casey Nolan has the story of their search for justice in tonight's cover story. Parked in the back lot of a mall. Started recording now. Sitting in the front seat. Let's hope this goes well. This is not where the story begins, but it is the one time where what was always whispered was recorded. You're not wired, are you? Tim. <laughs> even if only one of them knew that's what was happening. Like, and I started thinking about things with us because... It had taken Emily Morris nearly two decades to confront this story and the man in the front seat with her. Nobody believed Emily. Her family says it started when Emily was at the most 16. James Wilder was 29 and her cross-country coach at Lindbergh High School. They say their relationship started with Wilder as her mentor. She was very, very innocent and she thought things were funny and she thought life was fun. Emily was good at cross country and Wilder good at coaching. He was loved. He was. Yeah. Oh, and he was well, revered. There were people who loved him, who admired him. But as the pair spent more time together after practice on out of town team trips, the rumors spread. This kind of stuff, if we were the same age, would have been no problem. But now I had no idea. I felt like a flustery little kid. There were times I did not want to do anything because I just didn't think it was where we, what we should do, but we do it anyway. Yeah. And part of it, you're persuasive. And it wasn't like it hurt. <laughs> you know, it was, yeah. I did enjoy the end result. Her family says a student saw Emily and Wilder in the woods after practice and reported it. They say Lindbergh administrators investigated, found Emily had done nothing wrong, and dropped it. Wilder kept coaching, and Emily kept quiet. Her mother says she now sees there were signs the stories were true. It was as though somebody had turned off who she was and substituted a person I didn't know. Do you know why she changed? Now I do. At the time, I didn't. The rumors became a running joke around school. Emily's sister would hear the same stories six years later. It was their responsibility to report this to the police and to have it investigated. And as far as we know, they did not. Still, Emily, now an adult, said nothing even when another student accused Wilder of sexual contact a decade later. Prosecutors cleared him, and he was allowed to keep his job. At the same time, her family and friends say Emily's life spiraled into alcohol and depression. I can say that most of her turmoil throughout life started because of this. In 2013, it was the story of another friend's daughter, also coached by Wilder, that finally made Emily want to come forward. And the daughter came home and told the mom that she didn't like the way that Coach Wilder had touched her today. And Emily at that point said, I can't let this happen to anyone else. She went to police. And I remember that week was one of the most challenging weeks of her life. Police gave Emily the recorder and Wilder gave them the evidence they needed for an arrest. I actually haven't been able to listen to the whole thing. It makes, it makes me sick to my stomach and makes me cry. So yeah, it would have been kick ass just to have had a non-sexual relationship at that time. Now. Was it electric at times? Heck yeah. I always want you to know that I was there to protect you, not to harm you. Like even when that time you were on that medicine and you were naked, I could have done anything I wanted. And don't get me wrong, I wanted to. When was this? At your house. A month after the recording and nearly 20 years after their relationship, prosecutors charged Wilder with six counts of second degree sodomy. But Emily would never get the chance to testify in court. We're here to tell her story because she will never be able to tell her story. Just as her case was about to go to trial, Emily's dad found her dead in her apartment, rolled up in a blanket with her head in a trash can. The medical examiner said she choked on the trash bag. How that happened could not be determined. She was found next to an empty bottle of vodka, but tests showed she had less than the legal limit in her system. There was a bottle of vodka in her room, and uh, I think they saw that, and case closed. And without Emily's testimony, the case against Wilder closed too. As soon as she passed away, they dropped the case, which was stunning to me because the evidence that they were able to use to charge him, we still have. St. Louis County prosecutors declined to talk on camera, but a spokesman told us that due to the fact that the victim is deceased, they could no longer proceed with the case. Beyond that, he said he couldn't discuss it because the case is closed. But it seems the tapes may have cost Wilder his job at Lindbergh. In 2015, the police gave new evidence to the school district. That evidence provided 
definitive information that our administration needed to move forward. Lindbergh suspended Wilder when he was charged and negotiated his resignation after his case was closed, nearly 20 years after a student first reported seeing him in the woods with Emily. I can't speak to how things were handled 20 years ago, and I can't talk about an investigation. I can tell you, given the information that has been shared with administrators, our administrators and our board members have moved swiftly and decisively. But for Emily's family, nothing has moved fast enough since she found the courage in that car to record her old coach. She very, very, very much wanted him to lose his teaching license as a result and to be at the very least uh, labeled as a sex offender. And none of that has happened. We did something that wasn't right according to our laws these days, right? But you know I'm not a creeper. We tried to reach Wilder, but we have not heard back. State records show he is not currently teaching, but he does still have a license. We're waiting for answers from the state as to why. And we should point out the spokesperson for Lindbergh also went to Lindbergh the same time as Emily even ran cross country with her, but she said she could only speak in this story in her capacity as an employee of the district. So her death, it sounds so strange. Did you talk to investigators? Have they said anything, any other details about what they think maybe happened? It sounds strange to her family too. They would like police to take another look at it, but right now the prosecutor's office can only say that it just appears to be a tragic death. Casey, it was incredibly interesting and an unbelievable story. Thank you.